I see such strong parallels between the situation the world is facing with Iran today and the story of Passover. And I wanted to uh, make this point. In fact, I'm wearing a Passover matzah tie just to make sure it all understands. I want to focus it based on the uh, Torah reading and the half Torah of the first day of Pesach. I mean, think about what went on there. We have the chapter 3 and chapter 5 of the book of Joshua where three things happen in the half Torah portion. Number one, it says they have to roll back the disgrace of, of Egypt and of the time in the desert when they didn't circumcise themselves and they had to circumcise themselves. And the idea of going from humiliation and degradation to success is one of the great themes of the Passover Haggadah, where it says specifically you go from Ganai, degradation and humiliation, to Shevach, to praise and glory, to being liberated, to going to be free to being from polytheist to monotheist. So number one was circumcising themselves <coughs> to roll away the disgrace of not being circumcised. Number two, it says in the Haftorah that uh, they finally were able to grow crops and feed themselves so God stopped sending the manna. They had to act like adults and take care of their own business. And number three, there's this very dramatic story where Joshua, who is now the successor of Moses, and must have been scared, it was before his first battle with Jericho, where he's out alone and he sees some guy with a drawn sword and he says to the guy, are you with us or against us? Which is a really reasonable question to ask when you're out there and you don't have any bodyguards and you're the leader responsible for the welfare of all the people and you see this guy with a sword and he heard the most comforting words imaginable. The person said, I am the captain of the Lord of hosts. In other words, God has sent me to make sure that you understand God is with you and take off your shoes, it's holy. And this is a very similar story to what happened with Moses. I mean, Moses, he, uh, was the, he grew up in the Pharaoh's palace. He was the prince. He goes outside and he sees an Israelite being uh, humiliated and tortured by an Egyptian, so he kills the Egyptian. And then he finds out that he's being hunted, so he runs away to Midian. And there God says to him, you have to go back and do your job and get my children out of Israel. And Moses, of course, is frightened. And he says, who am I to do this? And you know what God says to him? I will be with you. And there's other stories in the tradition of people trying to run away from their responsibility. The story of Jonah and, and when he tries to run away to sea and then he gets, swallowed, he gets tossed overboard and he gets swallowed by a whale. And the way God gets him to go back, you know, he, he's running away from God because he doesn't want to go to Iraq, to Nineveh, and tell the people to repent. And finally, God uh, has him, he goes to sleep under a gourd and the gourd dies and he says, how come you let this gourd die, God? And God says, my children are suffering there, now you go get them. To repent and then you'll understand and you have the story of Elijah where Elijah runs away and he tries to hide in the cave and God says you get out there and go back and do your job well it's our time to do our job now what do I mean specifically well the Torah reading for the first day of Passover includes a portion of the end of the plagues and you know the parallel is so acute you have the leader a tyrannical leader of an Arab nation who was trying to commit genocide against the children of Israel killing all the males forcing everyone to hard labor, oppressing them, and God sends Moses to take care of it, and God then assists with all of these sanctions, getting increasingly tough, and finally, and, and, and Pharaoh doesn't change his mind, and finally you need cr san crippling sanctions that bring Egypt to its knees, the death of the firstborn, and finally the people say, get them out of here before we all die. Well, we have to, we've tried like little sanctions against Iran and it hasn't done anything to stop them in their pursuit of nuclear bombs. And we need crippling sanctions so strong they will bring Iran to its knees where the people will say, stop this before it kills us all. And the question is, there is one person who was responsible who can make sure this happened. Now Israel took care of business with Iraq in 1980 when it destroyed their nuclear program in Syria quietly two years ago. But there's only one guy in the world who can do it now, and that's President Obama. And we have to say to him, are you with us or against us? Are you going to do what you said, which is not let Iran get a nuclear bomb? You are the only person in the world who has the power to do this. You know, I'm thinking about Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, when I saw him in APAC, And he's got the weight of the Jewish people on his soldiers, the children of Israel. He is the one guy who has to make the decision of what to do. And it'll be on his plate. Now, Iran is going to get his work assiduously, day and night to build these nuclear bombs, and we don't know if Israel has the capacity to stop it by themselves. And will the United States let them? Because they right now need fly routes over Iraq. 
Now, perhaps Israel has the drones that can do it. We just don't know. But we know that the United States, with its B-52s, is the one country that could bomb Iran back to oblivion uh, and, and stop its targeted nuclear program with its deep cluster bombs and whatever it needs to do. But will it do it? And our generation is the generation that's got to step up to the plate and say, stop Iran. I mean, we don't know exactly what happened in the generation of American Jews in the Holocaust, but whatever it was, it wasn't enough to stop the Nazis from killing 6 million Jews before the United States and Russia and England, etc., the coalition, stopped them. Well, we've been saying since then, we've been saying since then, never again. Well, is it true, never again? Are we going to do what it takes? And so I think the message is very clear that we have to roll back the disgrace of Iran in the world. We have to act like adults and feed ourselves, do what we have to do to make sure we stay safe. And finally, when we confront the figure with the drawn sword, is that person the captain, the Lord of hosts? Will he stand with us? Will he say to us, I am there with you, I will be with you, I will drive Iran to its knees so they will give up their crippling sanctions before they create bombs? Because once they get a bomb, they got missiles that can reach not only Israel, but all of Europe. You know they're working on missiles that can reach the United States. And they can also give bombs to, uh, to terrorists. So it's the most important, urgent issue in the world.